Hi guys, Dan Hendrickson here. I have made it to the fantastic PGA Catalonia golf course here today. We're about an hour away from Barcelona in Spain. I'm over here on a uh, PGA Pro-Am and I wanted to share with you a lesson that I once had. 10 to 12 years ago, I was playing as an amateur. I wouldn't have said that I was the best bunker player in the world, but I wasn't too bad. However, um, a good friend of mine at the time who was playing a lot of county golf with me was a very, very good golfer himself. Um, in fact, he's here this week. So what I've done is I've pulled him over to share with you this lesson that he put me through all those years ago. Now, James Ruth, who the chap that I'm gonna be uh, doing this session with, he has just shot six under par around Catalonia PGA course, the stadium course here. And I've got to say, I mean, I, we've just been out there and played. It's a fantastic golf course. If ever you get a chance to come and play it, make sure you put it on your list. Let's go over and see James and, uh, and see, what he, uh, see what he can share with us that can hopefully help your bunker play as well. Jimbo. Dan. How you doing? Yeah, very good. So. Nice to see you. Yeah, very good. Great score today. Well done. Thank Absolutely you. Absolutely fantastic. Six under par. What a fantastic... I mean, you must have played well for that. Yeah, played really good today. Good lad. Yeah. So, talk to me about this bunker lesson. Can you remember it? It was a long time ago. I can vaguely remember it. I remember the session I had at England. So, yeah, I can definitely remember what I was talking about. So, basically, what had happened is James was playing for England at the time and he'd been over to have some short game sessions up at Woodall Spa. And when he came back from that session, he then saw me on the golf course which is where he kind of shared some of his well he basically tried to help me as best he could to try and help my bunker play like I said I wasn't a bad bunker player but there was definitely room for improvement there what was I doing can you remember it that well was, yeah was you I were stood, stood too close to the ball right okay so you were stood too close to the ball and then your leading edge was just digging into the sand you had no speed and the ball basically stayed in the bunker yeah because basically I was just like I said, I wasn't a bad bunker player, but I just felt like I was taking way too much sand a lot of the time when I was playing bunker shots, therefore not getting any control with the ball when it landed. It was always kind of running out, and I was kind of relying on that, wasn't I? Yes, yeah. Basically too much sand, and then you couldn't create any spin or control. So you've just been working over there with that, that gentleman that we've literally just just bumped into. Um, he was doing something similar to me, wasn't he? Correct, yeah. So he what, was stood far too close to it. Okay, and, and what, what do you notice when you're teaching people like this? What do you notice happens to the, let's say, the strike when they come into the sand? Basically, the strike comes out of the hosel there. And sometimes you see it, it looks like a thin, but it's actually coming out of the bottom of the hosel. Yeah. Um, because they're too close to it, and their hands are then moving further away from their body. Yeah. Either that, or they're like I say, they're just digging the club into the sand and taking way too much sand. So for all the golfers that are now at home watching this, if you ask them to pick up their sand wedge and have a little look at it, are we going to see some scuff marks on the side of that hosel? Most, most definitely, yeah. yeah. There'll be some scuff marks, a lot of heel strikes, or even scuff marks towards the, the hosel there, which I see when I'm teaching. Okay, so just show me now what we kind of went through at that particular time. So I asked you to stand in my footprints. Yeah. Um, which you would have been maybe kind of here. Yeah. And I asked you to stand in my footprints a much, much further away. You know, wider stance, slightly lower handle. Yeah. And you're feeling like you're further away from the ball. Okay. And I felt at the time that it was a huge stretch. Like I was reaching for the golf ball when I was trying to set up to hit the shot. Yeah. You actually said to me, I think at the time, that you didn't feel like you could hit a golf shot from that position. No, because it felt like it was too far away. Yes, correct. Okay, let's have a little go then. So the strike on that is just pure, isn't it? I mean, that's got complete control over that golf really ball. Really shallow, can still be aggressive, but you're, you know, basically you, know, you hear people talking about the donut or, you know, an area around the ball. But when you're nice and shallow like that, you can really slide the club underneath the ball and not be afraid of catching too much sand or yeah. even thinning the ball. Okay. So basically what James is kind of just saying there is that he was teaching me how to manage my low point coming into the bunker. So I was a player that was taking way too much sand, no control, and I needed a club with lots of bounce to be able to cope with the shots that I was playing. You know, when you play it in this type of way, which is, I've got to say, I now use this and I have done for the last sort of 10 to 12 years um, that when James showed it to me, my bunker play came on leaps and bounds and it's a technique that I still teach myself. It's a technique that obviously I use and I use it to some good effect when I'm out playing. It's just something I think that you could probably all have a little go with yourself when you're next in the practice bunker and, uh, and see how you get on.
So there's just a little tip for you on bunker play. There's lots of different ways and techniques and, and ideas on how to get out of bunkers effectively. However, this was just one particular way that James was able to share with me, which I've got to say has helped my bunker play so much over the last 10 years. It's something I really do stick with using. It's something I pass on to many of the clients that I work with, and it's just a fantastic way in which I can shallow that out, control the low point of how much sand I'm taking with the ball. It's just something I think you could have a little play with yourself. Let me know, put your comments down below. Is it an area of your game that you've suffered with? Is it an area of the game that you think this might be able to help you? I'd like to hear what you have to say. Don't forget, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up if you like what you're seeing, and ring that bell, and we'll get you through some notifications of more videos coming your way. We look forward to catching up with you again soon.